I'm Jack, I'm one of the data scientists at Pebble, um, and I'm really here to talk about data analytics and Pebble and hidden in there and you. Um, to start and begin, I'd like to talk about this common goal. Um, just a very simple premise. Pebble has goals. One of its goals is to increase app usage amongst users, um, have users use apps, you know, enjoy their experience. And as developers, I assume that you have multiple goals, and one of them should also be to increase app usage amongst users. So if we can start by this simple premise, um, you know, it will go a lot further that uh, our goals are quite aligned. So how does the space look right now? Well, we, and by we, I mean you, are actually doing really well so far. About half of our users use an installed app on a weekly basis. That's really good. Um, for the watch faces, about 80% of our users use a non-system watch face on a weekly basis. That's even better. Um, so let me set the stage right now. This talk will be a little bit watch app heavy because we're actually doing really good on watch faces right now. And so the question is that there is a remaining half of our users that are not engaged with a watch app on a weekly basis, and how do we engage the remaining half of our users? <clears throat> and so one, is our, one of Pebble's goals is to increase app downloads. Getting more downloads leads to more app usage, more, more users trying apps out. And the second one is to increase sustained usage of apps. You might ask yourself at this point, what is sustained usage? So we have this very simple diagram in the left in blue, what you see is, for example, a population of users who use your app this week. On the right, you have a population of people who maybe use your app next week. Between any given two weeks, there's going to be a population of people who used apps this week that didn't use apps next week. Those are users who left that we consider. We want to avoid people being in this population. There are new users, users who use it next week that didn't use it this week. Um, these are the users that we want to generate in increasing app downloads. And there's this population in the middle that continues to use it. And so what we really mean by sustained usage is to uh, get users to continuously be involved on a weekly basis. So having understood this, how can analytics help? Well, one, and I've noticed this as I was reading the, um, the sort of brainstorming idea outside, one thing that keeps coming up is you guys want access to your data. And so that's also what we're here to talk about, is giving you direct access to how your app is performing. And before I get to it, I just want to tell a little bit of story of how the data comes out to be. Um, we start with any watch face. We launch an app. That's the music app. And a variety of things can happen at this point. Uh, a user can interact with the app, um, leading to button clicks, for example. They can close an app, and this leads to an elapsed time of the app. Or the app can crash, and we can track how many app crashes there are. We roll this up on an hourly basis. And so this, this part here is relatively crucial to understand because we don't actually get uh, straight up event counts like every single time an interaction occurs. What we get is this hourly roll up. So what we have data on are like an hour, in an hour, a user uh, pressed a button 10 times, for example, over two app launches. Um, there is no description of how that's split up in the various app launches. So we get this hourly roll up. And now we pipe it to you through a dev portal, developer portal. Um, what I've shown here is multi-timer. And what I really want to point out is this name up here, Matthew Toll. Um, he's not only the developer of multi-timer, but he's also the person that is currently piping all the data to you. Um, so I want to give a big shout out to Matthew for making sure that all gets accomplished. Um, so I don't know how many of you have actually started looking at this, uh, this information, but this is how it, uh, how it looks uh, a little bit right now. Um, this is mul Matthew Toll's multi-timer app. You can hit the analytics button, and once you hit that, you're led to a page where you can already see things like the number of users that are using your app on a daily basis. And with these tabs, you can see things like unique users, even launches, perhaps even things like the crash count, how many times they've crashed. And we can break this down in this group by version right here via things like hardware platform, things like AppLite, Basalt, uh, eventually Chalk for the Pebble time round, and mobile platform, which is iOS or Android right now. 
So this is what you've been given so far. Um, and what I'm pleased to tell you about right now is that we're actually going to be piping more analytics to you. And one of the first pieces of analytics that we're going to show you is on the front page of when you go to your app is this battery grade. And this battery grade, well, you will get a letter grade, and I'll break down what this letter grade means later in the, in the discussion. You can also go to view more details and look at what the battery performance was over your various app versions to see if the battery life, the changes you've made to your app to improve battery life have been improved on the user perspective right now. So what are some other analytics that are coming through? Well, uh, simple raise of hand. How many people in this room have integrated with Timeline? Great. So you're probably curious to know, for example, how many users are opening your pins on Timeline. And for this particular app, we're getting about 1,000 users opening the pins on Timeline. And you can do the same thing, breaking it down by things like the mobile platform, iOS or Android. How many of them are interacting via iOS? How many of them are interacting via Android? There are things like you know, total number of pins opened, same thing. Users actually launching your app directly from a pin, you know, not from the launcher menu, but going through a pin and launching this. And things like the total number of times that this happens. Now, in addition to this, there's one more piece of information that you'll be getting, and this is the number of button press for launched. And so for this particular app right here, it looks like we're averaging about eight to 10-ish button, button presses per launch. So I hope you keep this all in mind and are super excited to really dig into this analytics and you know, get a good sense of your app. Um, so going back to how can analytics help, what we hope for the developer portal uh, analytics to help you with is give you basic understanding about the statistics of your app and to help you hopefully troubleshoot. So as you might notice, you can break things down by app versions and you can break crashes down by app versions too. So the, the, the idea behind this is that if you can understand which versions of your app is crashing on which platforms per se, um, both iOS versus Android, or which one of the hardware platforms, app like Basalt or Chalk, it will help you more, be able to more troubleshoot your apps um, than before. And also to give you insights into areas of improvement. So as I went through the dev portal analytics, you might have thought to yourself, well, it's cool that we get a battery grade right now, but what does that mean for me other than I can improve this space? And I'll talk a little bit about battery life moving forward. And we also talked about the number of button clicks per launch, and this is a proxy for user interaction, and then I'll also talk about how you can use this as a key piece of insight to improve the app experience for users. And then also, the lastly, timeline implementation, which it seemed a lot of people in this room had already done, and I'll explain exactly how timeline implementation is affecting the usage of your apps. And this goes into this, all of this goes into a second question, second point in which analytics can help you from Pebble, is that we as data scientists are trying to figure out what users want from watch apps, and we want to communicate these ideas of how to sustain usage to you so that you can better uh, develop apps um, for what users want. So going back to all of this, Battery life, why does it matter? Well, current battery life for our products are seven days for Pebble Classic, about five days for Pebble Steel, seven days for Pebble Time, and 10 days for Pebble Time Steel. Historically, this has been very good, and from an app perspective, even if you drain something like 30% of the battery life, say, you still get multi-day um, battery life. Now, you, you know now for Pebble Time Round that it's now only two days, so any significant drain on battery life actually significantly affects the user experience on Pebble Time Round. Now, this is from the user perspective. What about for you? Well, I'm just going to make this statement. If the battery is dead, users can't launch your apps. So you know, that, I feel like that's, that speaks for itself. So what does battery life uh, look like currently right now? And this will be one of many plots that I will show you today. And I will start this plot by saying that on the y-axis, we'll have this battery life performance index of which positive is better. And I, I, I want you guys to get in the mood right now that any time a plot shows up today, that the higher it is on the plot, the better the app is or the watch face is. So positive is good. And we can show this for multiple apps. Every single dot is an app or a watch face here for any arbitrary app or face index. And you can see that there is a cloud of watch faces and watch apps that are 
significant battery drain on the pebble. And this is what I called, refer to as the danger zone. We really want to avoid having any apps in this region. Uh, there are apps and watch faces that are really good, have less uh, battery drain, and this is the good region we really want apps to be in this region. And you'll notice that there is a middling region which exists um, where it's doing decent. We'd really like to push those to the good region, but they're, they're very much not in the danger region right now. So going back to dev portal analytics that we we're talking about in the battery grade, um, don't be alarmed. The grades are standard grades that you might expect, A, B, C, D, and F. Anything in the danger zone has been graded a D and an F, and anything in the good region has been graded an A or B, and anything in the middling region has been graded a C. So the, the, the analytics there are really to help you figure out how to maybe ways to improve. Um, and we'll talk about, a little bit about ways to improvement, such that if you are in this danger zone, um, you can be aware of it to, mark, to make improvements towards bringing it out of the danger zone and potentially into a good region. So how can, what can be done about improving battery life? Well, I'm a data scientist. So this is where I rely on other people to help me. And uh, we do have best practices for battery power on the developer website um, under best practices for battery power. But I think t uh, there are a couple things that also came up that, uh, that I wanted to point your attention to. A lot of the significant drain watch faces and watch apps have constantly refreshing animations. Um, and that makes sense. So one way that you might be able to tune this down is perhaps reduce the number of animations, perhaps maybe on a watch face or not once a second, but once a minute. But also in case that you weren't there, uh, Matthew, Matt Hungerford in Pebble Graphics talked about this uh, glancing algorithm in which the watch face was mostly silent until you glanced at it and in which the animations go. And we found that that uh, saved on battery power. So if that's something you're interested in, I would suggest you know, once the presentations are posted online, perhaps go to review Matt Hungerford's presentation about how this can be implemented for your purposes. And um, last year at the developer retreat, there were also talks um, talking about ways to improve battery life, ranging from things like best graphics and uh, coding principles to even battery life um, presentation by Stuart uh, last year. And so I, I encourage you, uh, as you're thinking about this, to go to these sources as perhaps a starting point. So moving forward, we've talked about battery life. The rest of this presentation will focus very tightly on uh, the button clicks, which is an inter user interaction, and then the, effect, and the eventual timeline implementation. <clears throat> so why do button clicks matter? Why do we even pipe this value to you? Well. I think, from my perspective, that what we're, what we're looking for in button clicks is uh, a data insight about how users like to interact with their watch apps. And the idea is, is that whatever we learn here, we can uh, discuss with you into delivering exactly what users want, the experience users want, um, to increase the sustained usage of your watch apps. So what have we learned about this? Well, I promised many plots, and yet this is yet another plot that you will see. On the x-axis, as you increase to the right, will be more button clicks per app that you see on here. And on the y-axis, as I promised, increasing y-axis values is better sustained <coughs> usage uh, for that particular app. Again, each dot is a different app. And as you look at the trends of these particular apps, I hope one thing becomes incredibly obvious. Usage decreases with more button clicks. But we can do better. You know, we're, we're, we're analytics right here. We can, for example, look at what the median uh, sustained usage is represented by this green line, and something even more obvious comes to play, which is that the, the apps that have sustained usage better than the median exist all in this red uh, rectangle right here. And so there's probably a rule of thumb here that says if you're having more than eight button clicks per launch, um, you're actually uh, moving dangerously towards this region right here where you're going to be below the median. Um, to provide a little of context of that, that's, um, the intuition here is that the watch, the watch is a small device. You, know? you want to deliver information directly to the user. They don't want to be traversing through all the various buttons, you know, the screen, the small screen, looking for that information which is why we think this, uh, this trend exists. 
So we know this now, um, that users don't want to click through buttons. But how do we implement something? What has Pebble done? What Pebble feature can really help streamline the app experience for the users? And that's where we come to Timeline. <clears throat> so Timeline was developed to directly deliver information and avoid increased button clicks. For those of you who have seen Timeline, you know, this is going to be a review. You basically start from any watch face, and with one button click, which is scrolling through Timeline, boom, you already have information directly delivered to you. In this, game, in this case, the time of a game. That's one click. So remember, eight clicks maximum for information. With two clicks, you open the pin, and you have even more information, in this case, the score of the, uh, of the game. And then with the third click, you directly do go to a launching of an app. So we're well within that eight click maximum right now. And we've delivered a lot of information with these three clicks. What does the time, uh, timeline look like? I think that I stop here to talk a little about Basalt versus AppLite. Um, just very quickly as a reminder, apps on AppLite cannot push pins yet. Apps on Basalt can push pins to the timeline, but you have a choice whether or not to implement that feature. And it's worth noting that Timeline is coming to every single Pebble platform, Pebble Classic, Pebble Steel, and Pebble Time Round. So what we've learned from the Basalt data right now is that three quarters of users on Basalt will actually scroll through the Timeline and look at that information on a weekly basis. Let's contrast this number against the 50% about in which users launch watch apps. There's a great opportunity here to engage another fraction of the users that ne don't necessarily engage with watch apps via this timeline. And if we're talking about things like launching apps, it's also worth noting that greater, of, greater than a quarter of all pin opens will lead directly to an app launch. So this is a great avenue for the apps to have usage, um, another avenue for uh, users to interact with the app. I think, and then, um, Fewer than, currently, fewer than 4% of the apps in the App Store push pins to the timeline. And so not very many people have actually leveraged this yet. And I'll come back to this point a little bit. And so from your perspective, I think it's a great question to ask, does pushing pins to timeline have a positive impact for app usage? It's a fair question. So how are we going to prove this? We're going to look at two case studies. The first case study is we're going to look at apps on both Basalt and AppLite that exist on both platforms for apps that push pins on Basalt and not uh, push pins on Basalt and then for another population of apps that do not push pins on Basalt. And we're going to compare the usage between the two populations to see what the effect of the uh, pushing pins are. And in the second case study, we're going to compare the before and after of an app that didn't initially push pins on Basalt and then all of a sudden did and track what their usage looked like after they pushed pins on Basalt. A key point here to remember as I go through these case studies is if pins increase usage as the question we're trying to target here, then we should see an app increase in both case studies when pins are incorporated. So let's start with the first case study. We're going to compare basalt versus applite usage. What we're going to look for is what the basalt usage is relative to the applite usage. If it's higher, if it's lower, because applite is the one thing that cannot push pins yet. And again, Coming back to the theme, plots, positive values equals good. We're going to look over time um, and keep in mind that the one here means equal usage on basalt and applite, so no difference between the two. We're going to look over time between apps that don't push pins and apps that do push pins on basalt. Blue will be apps that don't push pins. Red will be apps that do push pins on basalt. And I think it's very, very clear to see that when you push pins, there's a much higher usage, two and a half to three times better usage on Basalt relative to their app-like counterparts. Um, so I hope this is convincing for you already that incorporation with Timeline will help app usage. Now, I promised a second case study of before and after in case you're not convinced by the previous plot. So we're going to look again at a usage rate uh, in which, again, positive indicates better usage rate over time of two apps in which one app will start incorporating pins after this time demarcated by the green line. Again, blue will be, represent the app that doesn't push a pin after the green line, and red will be an app that push pins after the green line. And when you, at, before 
and either of them uh, has done anything, you can see that their usage is relatively constant. And afterwards, uh, I think it's very clear to see that apps that do push pins have this uh, skyrocketing uh, app usage moving forward. So I hope combining these two together, you're somewhat convinced now that app usage increases after integrating timeline pins. And I hope that you know, this is convincing to you that this could be what your app looks like um, if you don't in, uh, include timeline quite yet. So taking this all together, I, what I hope you take away from this particular, these particular case studies is that timeline has the potential to help apps increase usage. And given that fewer than 4% of the apps in the App Store right now push pins, that you have a unique opportunity to be the first apps to use timeline across every single Pebble platform, because it's coming to every single Pebble platform. And in case you missed it again, um, John talked about best use case for timeline in case you needed some ideas about you know, how to incorporate timeline with your watch apps. So there's been a lot of information delivered here, and there are four key points that I hope you walk away with. One is that use the new and exciting developer portal analytics. Um, they will get pushed. We will have all the new analytics to you uh, soon. Try to conserve on battery life. Um, you know, and the third one is to streamline information from apps to decrease the number of user interactions to avoid to deliver information more directly. And the fourth one is incorporate timeline pins. All of these should help app usage, should help watch face usage. Um, before I continue and end, uh, I just wanted to mention that we're always interested in any feedback and requests for more developer portal analytics. So I know for, I've already seen the post-it notes outside and I've already been trying to think of how we can get the, deliver that information to you. And I want to leave also with two challenges. How will you reduce battery life drain? And then how will you incorporate timeline if you haven't already? Better question for those who have incorporated timeline, how might you perhaps leverage timeline in different or better ways. And so again, I understand that this is right before dinner time. I want to thank you for being here and listening to me. And then I'll open the floor up to any questions or discussions. Cool. OK, let's get started. Uh, so first of all, thanks for making all this data or working on making this data exposed to us. It's really useful. Um, I was curious, maybe not for showing you know, in the dev portal, but do you guys see is there a way to break down pins by whether or not they include a reminder, include a notification? So, you know, a pin can just sort of sit passively in the timeline, or I can bother the user every five minutes mm -hmm. with a reminder. And I'm sure you see very different usage rates until they uninstall your app out of frustration. So, um, there is. Mm -hmm. um, what I would, I think that right now, given the fact that there are so few, uh, so few number of apps that, that use timeline, it's difficult for us to infer what those differences are. Um, so hopefully, you know, by next year, you know, my, my goal is to get every single app to use timeline and we'll have this wealth of information and then I will be able to come back and, you know, answer that question exactly as to reminders versus notifications versus passive pins and all these different things. Um, oh, sorry, I should mention, uh, the question was whether or not we have information on, uh, the different types of pins that might exist on timeline. Um, I think there's, yeah. So I talked to Brent about this before. Uh -huh. and, um, I was wondering right now, um, are you, you've shown Matthew's uh, or Matt's uh, multi timer, mm -hmm. um, the crash count, and I was wondering like, um, how far you can take this or where are you at with like, um, making more information about crashes available to us? Um, We're actually working on it. Um, so, as I, app troubleshooting and debugging I, is, is, is one of the most frustrating things um, I think a developer has to, has to deal with. And so we're, there's actually significant efforts as to try to provide more transparency um, about wh where things crash, for example. Like find out like, uh, um, let, for example, maybe which page. Um, and I think there's some vision as to maybe even providing like which line of code it crashes on or something like that. So uh, I'm currently working with the engineers to try to figure out how that might be implemented. So definitely keep your eye out for that. Right now, it's just 
we're working on it, so I, I actually have no idea what the final form might be for the time being. Yeah. Sorry. Um, for the battery grade, would there ever be a more detailed breakdown of like where where your battery life is going, just so you can save time optimizing your app? Um. So sorry, I I may not understand that question. What do you mean by where battery life is going? Yeah, like if you get a battery a battery grade of F or mm -hmm. something. Um, that's a great question. Um, actually, one that I so the question was whether or not there will be a more detailed breakdown of where battery life drain comes from, um, similar to the question earlier about like more detailed breakdown of app crashes and bugs. Um, I hadn't even considered that quite yet, um, so I don't know. But it's a great idea, um, and I'll definitely go back to see if we can actually provide that kind of information. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Um, do you have you had stats for um, the watch app open um, timeline matches? Mm -hmm. Does that have stats for HTTP actions? That I don't know actually. Um, sorry. That's okay. And the other thing I found, I found out um, yesterday that the excessive timeline pins actually uses your battery. I was wondering if the if the battery um, usage would also include timeline usage or not really. So um, the question was. Um, that there was found out that excessive uh, timeline usage affects battery usage also. Um, and so the question is whether battery life will reflect that. So at this point, going back to your question earlier about more detailed breakdowns of battery life, um, any battery life effect um, encompasses all a, a, a whole host of issues right now. It could include things like excessive timeline usage. It can also include things like uh, you know excessive um, App elapsed time, for example, like necess necessity of foreground, launch, uh, foreground time running. You know? And this is part of the reason why uh, we're advocate advocating things like streamlining apps right now, too. Because the, the, the less time it runs in the foreground, the less battery drain you, drain you have on that. So um, it will include it, um, but I think that I might just go back to the previous question, too, is once if we can figure out, and once we figured it out, I'm hoping that we can also deliver this information to you too, to again, figure out where the possible pain points are that the improvements can arise, you know, to really help, help you, uh, you know, work more efficiently. Yeah. Um, so some of these like graphs you showed of like kind of best practices, it'd be nice if you could somewhere include them on the federal developer site and update them if things change. One thing I'm just thinking is the education, right? Like, you know, how many apps would like to, what's the new features like you can maybe, you know, allow us to know like, hey, dictation is super popular. If you don't have it yet, you might want to add it to your app. Or Absolutely. Just things like that, right, would be really handy to know. Or like, here's what is happening in the whole. Like, Absolutely. The and data you're collecting. Absolutely. So I think that that point comes back to the goal that uh, that we had um, specifically for this time is to communicate all of this stuff to you guys. Also, you know, like, for example, this timeline usage. I, I don't know how many of you knew what the impact was, but I'm hoping that you, you like fully realize what that impact is right now. So any others? It is dinner time, so I assume you're all hungry. Well thank you very much.